Live from the Carl Chevrolet Studios in West Des Moines, this is Iowa Live. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Before we uh, check in with Professor Jeff Stein and the Iowa Almanac this morning, I want to remind you about the big tailgate party that is going to be going on at Coles Commons on Saturday. It's the touchdown tailgate, Iowa versus Iowa State, just down the road from where Jeff is at right now over in Iowa City. But we want you to come on out. This is a free event, and we want to let you know that if you bring a canned food item, a non-perishable food item for DMARC, uh, you have a chance to get yourself a drink ticket if you're one of the first hundred that comes out. We're going to have an Iowa versus Iowa State contest that will be going on. So there you have it. There are the details as to what is happening on Saturday. So the, we have a couple of Jumbo uh, Tron uh, TV screens that will be set up. We'll be having a whole lot of fun. Starts at 11. Game starts at 3 o'clock. So Professor Stein, being on that side of, of the state of Iowa, do you have to wear uh, black and gold tomorrow and Saturday, or can you stray a little bit? Well, keep in mind, I went to school at Iowa, but I taught at Iowa State, so I'm just neutral. I'm just going to be neutral, Lou. The tailgate sounds like a great deal of fun. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of people out there, and it looks like the weather's going to hold off till the very end of the game, which is fine because hopefully uh, we'll have an idea of who's going to do well by that time. But we want to talk about something that happened on this day in Iowa history because uh, September the 8th is pretty special, especially if you're a postal worker. Oh, absolutely, and you know, you remember waiting? I still do. Wait for the mail to come each day, and it's a part of our daily lives, six days a week. Well, let's go back to uh, a little more than 100 years ago, and when the magic of airplanes in the early part of the 1900s captivated all of America, you could see men and women fly machines long distances. It was just amazing, and soon practical uses for this advancement were developed, and that included commercial air freight and mail. Speaking of Iowa City, there's an airport there on the south end of town, and it was the first in the state to be used on the Chicago to Omaha commercial air freight route. The very first consignment was reported on January 8th of 1920. That's when 400 pounds of mail made its way to Omaha. But that wasn't all. They also put along a shipment of meat for a banquet in honor of General John Pershing. And as if that weren't enough, on the return trip, the plane carried a hog for a similar <laughs> banquet in Chicago. <laughs> so apparently uh, the plane was going there anyway. You might as well use it for other purposes. And that seemed to work out. And that continued to expand over time, didn't it? Absolutely. The transcontinental air mail service route was completed later that same year. It went westward through Omaha, Cheyenne, Salt Lake City, and Reno ultimately making it to San Francisco. Now, at that time, Lou, travel was only during the daylight, and the mail was actually delivered by military pilots. Now, you talked about uh, you know Iowa City and Omaha, but nothing in between, so it seemed like those were the two stops. Uh, where does Des Moines come into play? Well, it comes into play on this date, September 8th, 1920, when the very first sack of airmail delivered by a military pilot arrived in Des Moines as part of that new transcontinental route. Now, of course, I can speak to you through the internet. We can send electronic messages these days in seconds, but the wonders of airmail still very new when that very first sack of mail was delivered in Des Moines on this date in 1920. By my math, Lou, that's 102 years ago today. How about that? And did they, did they actually land the plane? I know you weren't there, but uh, or did they just heave it over the side and say, here's your mail? I, I'm feeling old, but not that old. No, I was not there that day. <laughs> you know, sometimes on the trains, they would do that where it would go through the station and the, the bag would be hanging off of the train and it would get caught right by a hook that a was hook. there for that purpose. Yeah. But you couldn't just do that with the plane dropping the sack was a little uh, unfortunate so they would come down drop it off and then take off again so that's a very good point very different than the trains that might pass through town and leave mail the planes very different wow so again history made in des moines today 102 years ago and boy how things have changed boy absolutely and you know it was a one or two cent stamp for regular mail wow. back then and now, uh, what, 60 cents for a letter. And so, uh, again, in 100 years, I guess, uh, with the rate of inflation, that's not that much if you think about it. <laughs> You're, that's very true. <laughs> All right, so if people want to go back and relive uh, what we just talked about here today or check out any other day of the year and find out what happened in Iowa history, what's the easiest thing they can do? 
We update every weekday morning at iowaalmanac.com, iowaalmanac.com. We're also on the Twitter machine, if you like, at Iowa Almanac, with a preview of each day's story, again, weekday mornings at iowaalmanac.com. All right, Professor Jeff Stein in the Iowa Almanac, thank you so much. We do appreciate it. We love learning things each time you're on the show with us. It is always a privilege. Have a great day, Lou. All right, you have a great day as well. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. We're going to be back here tomorrow, and tomorrow the Animal Rescue League with a dog training tip for you live in studio tomorrow on Iowa Live.